Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the raw life health. Like the raw food movement, the education of, of health, and and that actually, I, I the reason I'm here is because I believe that, I, and I know that we live in a day when when knowledge will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, and this is the knowledge of the Almighty. And part of His knowledge is the way that we should live on the earth. And so this great understanding of how we should live, this beginning to. Um, cover the earth is you know with this raw food movement of just how to live in harmony with creation how what the human body needs is all part of the restoration of what was lost when Adam and, and Kava Adam and Eve fell in the garden of Eden and that we're on our way to returning to living in a garden like you know condition and so I see that's what the movement is really all about to me that's why I'm here that's why I'm attracted to it you know I'm a believer in the, in the God of Abraham the Elohim of Abraham Yahweh and so this is what he's promised us and when we look at the promises long ago was made to Noah and it says to Noah his sons and all their children that will come after them that they would have, you know remember the sanctity of life and he made a promise that he would never destroy the earth with water like he did in the days of Noah. But there's going to come a, a, a time, a change, a cleansing of this earth one more time. You know, and, and um, part of how we're going to survive is by following the commandments and the, and the laws of the Almighty. And this is part of it, by not being gluttons, by not being, um, you know, lost, chasing after pharmaceutical companies and, and, and commercialized foods. And so I see living light is just like, is, is shining a light. And I and it's obviously gathered all these beautiful people here together. I was just set, telling someone at, at the bank actually that you can find things here you can't find anywhere else. You know, I think it, everybody should come check this place out. You know, and, and it's, I bring my family here to eat. It's like the only place we can go out to eat, you know. You're so, from here? I live in, I live in uh, Anderson Valley, yeah, so. Um, but you know, I'm just here and just to enjoy what's going on, to, to rejoice in the time we live in. Word. Yeah, not everybody is on the, the exact same tip, but when you come here, we're all uniting about the raw foods and everyone begins to gather around that. Well, see, I understand that when you eat like a cucumber in its whole form, it's, it's, it's made perfectly, basically, for our body or an apple. And so once people begin to eat this way, their minds, I think, eventually are going to start to work more correctly. And they'll be able to see the Most Highest Commandments and His, His love for us more easily and not be confused by what religion is teaching them. That's what's fogged up the scriptures, but the scriptures were never meant to be used and abused by religion, but meant to be, this is the covenant he made with all the human race, and so that's what it's about, you know what I mean? And it's about liberating those that are, those are prisoners in this world, the prisoners mentally, you know, set the captives free. And so it's, whether it's your diet, you know, your spiritual understanding, there's levels to this, and everyone's going to come in their own different way. But the last days it speaks of a highway. But there will be no ravenous beast, no lion to destroy us. A way that will be, the light will shine and we will be able to walk and everyone whose heart is right will be able to walk and reach restoration and perfection to where there will be a, one day a, a restored human race on the face of earth. Not just Adam and Kava, but it will be millions of beautiful children and men and women and they will have children, they will live forever. That's the original purpose of the living God. What I see is that is even the poorest man can be the richest man, you know? The rich man's wealth is in the city. Well, there's no wealth in the city, right? The poor man's wealth is in his holy place. The holy place, well, I mean, that's where he prays, you know? That's where he meditates with the Most High. And it's the earth. The earth is the holy place where we can plant. It says in the Proverbs that a man that, that tills his soil will eat, have plenty of bread, you know? But a man that sits back and folds his hands is going to end up with nothing. If people, whether they're poor or rich, will begin to plant, begin to learn, begin to eat whole foods, it's actually not that expensive to eat an apple. And if you have to eat 10 apples a day, it's really not that expensive, you know? Especially if you can go to the farm and pick them for free, there's fruit falling off trees everywhere. So just get out in creation. I have a brother named Oren who basically makes his whole living off wild crafting huckleberries and, and you know, other herbs that grow and roots, you know, and making all, all types of different tonics and stuff with it. There's so many ways to survive that the, actually it says, you know, that the poor man, it's better to have a little, like a poor man, than to have like a big ox ready to slaughter for your dinner and be, you know, with hatred. Better to have love, you know, so that's where the real wealth is, you know. Well, you know, playing music is, I mean, it's just a natural part of life, you know, I mean, life is music, I mean, the whole, 
the orbits of the planets and the movement of, of all the universe is a song that the, the Most High hears, and He created it all to work in harmony. And so, music is another way to get that same expression, that same understanding. You know, where people, if you play together in harmony, and the bass player plays it right, and I play my chords right, and I sing at the right pitch, and my drummer plays right, then we're creating something together, which is bigger than any of us. It's an invisible sound. It's also spiritual. And so, you know, music is a healing force when you choose to make it directed towards healing, and that's what that's what I'm here to What's do. What's the name of your band? Joseph Israel and the Jerusalem Band. I mean, it's kind of based around the reggae sound, but it's a singer-songwriter, you know. I, I just write music. I write songs. And so they're from the heart to your heart, you know, on the harp. <laughs> and people stay away from pasteurized milk. It's going to oh. make you sick. You got milk got ill. Seriously, right? You can find raw, you can find raw grass fed goat's milk from your friend and you can milk it yourself, then you're blessed. You know? Daylight diet. Daylight diet. Tell me your name. Kava. Kava. Here we are with Kava. Uh, and Kava is uh, uh, the offspring of Joseph Israel. <laughs> She's my youngest. Uh, Alright, Kava, tell us. Uh, uh, well, you ask her, Joseph. You just uh, pulled her over here and asked her something. What'd you ask her? Kava, what do you, what, you know, tell people about the daylight diet and what you think about it. Tell us what you think about the daylight diet. Um, what is it? Well, it's when you eat in the daylight. Well, look at the people and tell them. What do you do? Look at the people. You eat in the daylight. And what Great. do you not do at night? You don't eat, and as it, and you've been in, you you've been following that pretty good, huh? I guess. You guess, huh? What do you think? You know, what happened for the children out there if everyone starts to follow these things? You think people will see a benefit? Think they'll be healthy? Yeah. If they eat lots of raw raw fruits and vegetables, tell the children out there about how you feel when you eat the healthy food, the organic raw fruits and vegetables. I feel good. <laughs> she's being a little shy, but this girl right here. Let me tell you, she's a big. She's writing a book right now. I finished she, it. You finished it. Okay. What's the name of the book? Ruby, huh? huh? Ruby Creek. Okay. Ruby Creek. All right. And we're working on getting it published right now, and, and so it's going well. But let me tell you, this the, her the way she eats. She eats she, of all the children. She she practices temperance or moderation. Of all the children, even me, she eats the smallest amounts. But um, so she never overeats, and and she's. I learned that from this book a lot too, <laughs> and from your your book, you know, Health in the Scriptures. And so she practices these, these things naturally, and she has more time for her mind to develop into things. Where she's written a book, it's over 30 chapters, and wow. she's nine years old. It's 25. 25 chapters. 25. And anyway, she's just a beautiful person. She plays keyboards, and she's my daughter, and I love her. And, so we wow. love you, and, wow. and and the more we we live in harmony with creation, then we'll we'll be able to live in a more positive vibration and wow. keep the family situation together. You know. Uh, what's your favorite food? Fruits. What's your favorite fruit? Uh, oranges. Oranges. True. Have you ever had a durian? Yes. You like it? Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, uh, Joseph and uh, you. Kyle, and uh, uh, Yahweh bless you both. Thank you, thank you. Shalom, All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. The daylight diet, you should try it, you should live it, and you will feel it. Then you'll have to spread the news, because if you do, you know you won't lose. Daylight diet. Daylight diet. Right now, no, 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 daylight diet. You should try it Run life